Hello and welcome. I'm Maddie from Puzzles Please and I'm back today with lots more puzzles that I would like to share with you. I think I'm going to start off with this one here. It is a thousand pieces. The brand is Schmidt. It is Rainbow Island, this lovely fantasy puzzle and it is designed by Kiro Marchetti. I really, really love this fantasy illustration. To me, it has like a really mystical feel to it, like it's out of this world from a dream or an alien landscape. At the bottom of the puzzle, we've got trees and a valley with these ships are, are flying rather than sailing. And then there's this rock island with a kind of really stunning palace on top with towers and bridges that seem to be leading nowhere. And above that, we've got a clock with the zodiac signs. The sky is full of these really colourful hot air balloons. And then a massive rainbow, which passes straight through the zodiac clock. This is a really colourful puzzle. And there is lots of detail in there. It's made by Schmidt, which I really like Schmidt puzzles. I've previously done a review video on them. So if you want to find out a bit more about Schmidt, check that one out. But for now, let's move on to my two Cloudberry puzzles. I have got Curiosities and Feast, and I'm very excited to try these puzzles as these are going to be my first Cloudberry puzzles. The puzzles come in these little simple square grey boxes with just the design, name of the puzzle and piece count on the front. And then round at the back it's actually completely plain. This one is Curiosities. The design is quite modern and funky and quite surreal. We have a shop that kind of reminds me of a department store and it is packed full of all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Only in this shop, some of the customers are bears. I'm a little undecided how challenging this puzzle will be. The main colours, the yellow, the red and green, appear in different places throughout the puzzle. However, there is lots of detail in it and I think it's going to be a fun one. Okay, on to the next cloud breeze. This one is Feast. Now, what a feast this is. We've got lobster, tart, gatto, all sorts. You would definitely be spoilt for choice here. I actually think this feast might be a picnic as the background, this red and white gingham, reminds me of a picnic blanket. And I think that's also what is going to make this puzzle quite challenging, this repetitive pattern all over it. The next puzzle is one of my favourites from this haul. It is the Mythical World. It is a thousand pieces and this is from Lawrence King Publishing. I recently did a different puzzle of theirs. It was The World of Jane Austen, which is up on the channel and a lot of fun. So I have high expectations for this one. It comes in this nice sturdy square box with the design on the front and over onto the edges. If we turn it over to the back, we can see the full illustration. The puzzle is a map of the world that is full of magic and mythical creatures. In fact, just about everyone I can think of, from dragons and unicorns to the Kraken and Fenrir. I just find the artwork in this puzzle so bright and enchanting. And as the box says, it includes a fold-out poster of the puzzle image. And on the back of the poster, it has information on the different creatures that are in the puzzle, which I think will make it like a little bit extra fun as we piece it together. Next up is another world map. However, it is very different to the last one. This one is a world of Disney. It's by Ravensburger and is a thousand pieces. I actually completed this one last night and I've got to say I really, really enjoyed it. It's just so bright and it was quite easy to puzzle together. The colours are very distinct and lots of detail there. And we've just got so much Disney here from the Dalmatians, the Disney princesses, Peter Pan, 
Jungle Book and of course the most famous of them all is our Mickey and then on the world map we've got lots of Disney characters placed in the countries that they originate from, The Lion King down in Africa, 101 Dalmatians and Robin Hood in England, over in the US we've got Pocahontas and so on and so on. This was just a really bright and fun puzzle. Okay, sticking with Ravensburger. Next one is this one. It's a bit different to the others as this one is a 3D puzzle of the Eiffel Tower. It is being night edition, so it includes some LED lights. So once it's built, you can turn those on and turn the light off and it should sort of glow and light up. It consists of 216 pieces and they are made of plastic rather than cardboard. You can hear that. And it also looks like on the front of the box that as you go up the Eiffel Tower, build up, that the pieces are going to get smaller. So that should help make it a bit easier to figure out where the pieces go. When it's complete, it should be 18 and a half inches or that's 47 centimeters tall. So it's going to be quite big, but I do think it's going to look really cool. Okay, still sticking with Ravensburger. I'm going to move on to this one, the Museum of Wonder, a thousand pieces, and it's by Amy Stewart. I have already completed this one, so I have to say it was very good quality. And I do just really like these Amy Stewart bookcase style designs. You can, there's just like so much to see in the design and as you piece it together, you sort of keep discovering more and more that you hadn't noticed at first glance when you looked at the illustration. And there's a lot going on in this design from the Jurassic period down here to the ancient Egyptians, the art masterpieces, the ancient Greeks. It was really fun putting it together for me. It sort of almost reminds me of like a museum come alive, a bit like that movie, Night at the Museum. Okay, what to look at next? I think, take a look at this one, Mario Kart. It's a thousand pieces and it's by brand Winning Moves. This one is a bit of a blast from the past for me. I grew up playing Mario Kart and the Mario games and loved all the characters. So I saw this, it looked really bright and fun, so I thought, why not? And we've got Mario driving his cart, we've got Peaches there in the background, Toad, Palace. I actually think this puzzle is going to be quite challenging now. There's a lot of blue sky and the roads, a lot of grey there, sort of block colour, but we'll see. This is a Movie Masters puzzle from Hay. If you do like any of the puzzles I'm showing today, I will, in the description under the video, try to add links to where you can get them. But back to this one, it is a combination of famous scenes from Tim Burton films, and it is a seek and find puzzle. So somewhere in this puzzle, Tim Burton himself is hiding, well, a cartoon version of him anyway, and lots of the characters from the famous movies. So as you puzzle it together, you can kind of like look out for those characters. I think it's gonna be a really fun puzzle. The artwork is really striking as well. I really like the style. And some of these movies like Beetlejuice and so on, they're real classics and movies I really love. This is, I think, one of my favorites from the collection I'm showing you today. You can like always rely on hay puzzles to, you know, be a little bit different. The next one I've got today is very different style. This one is by Gibson's, a British puzzle company, and the artwork is by Steve Crisp. I've done quite a few of his puzzles before. In fact, I think the first puzzle I ever did on this channel, Castle Cutaway, that was one of his designs. But this one, this one is the Albert Dock in Liverpool. And Liverpool is my home city, so it's quite a special puzzle for me. You can see lots of the iconic buildings from Liverpool in the puzzle. Live buildings there, the Albert Dock, the ships in there, and there's lots of spectators looking. I think it's going to be a relatively challenging puzzle for blue sky and the buildings, but I'm really looking forward to it to puzzle my home city. Next up, I thought I would just quickly show you this one. 
It's a little crystal puzzle of a 3D steam locomotive. It's only 38 pieces, but I've never done a crystal puzzle before, so I'm very intrigued on this one. When I was on holiday in the summer, we went on a little trip on a steam train and in the gift shop was this little puzzle. So I just had to have it, a little souvenir, memory of the trip. Okay, next, what should we look at? There's not many left now. I think we'll take a quick look at this one. It's another Schmidt puzzle, as I do like my Schmidt puzzles. And it's another Disney one. I do have quite a soft spot for Disney. This one is the Jungle Book. It's a very different style to the other Disney puzzle I showed you. This one is a Kincaid Studios design. So instead of it being that sort of like classic, when you think of Disney being very bright and so on, this one is much more subtle. It's from a painting. It's much more sort of dreamy. These puzzles by Kincaid are always quite challenging. We can see in this one, there's a lot of green there. But Schmidt's are good quality, which really helps with it. So in this puzzle, we can see Mowgli with Blue and Bagheera. And they look like they're having a nice time. Mowgli looks very happy sitting on Bagheera's back with Blue. I wonder if he's singing the bare necessities. Okay, finally, our last puzzles. Here are our final two puzzles. They were sent to me by the Vermilion Collection. The artwork is by Giomo. I have no idea if I have pronounced that correctly, so I'll put it on the screen. So he's created this kind of magical world of his artwork, of these little elves with pointed hats all living joyously together. The first puzzle is Small Town. We can see it is really bright and colourful. If we take a look at the back, we can see the puzzle is a panoramic puzzle, long rather than being rectangular. It is 500 pieces and we can just see this like little town with these little happy elves living in all these little colourful houses. The second puzzle is the elephant's photo wall. It's a wall full of photos, there's a little elf putting one up, full of memories, family, friends. These puzzles are just so adorable. But one thing I have noticed, I haven't puzzled them yet, but the pieces are much smaller than standard puzzle pieces that I'm used to, like Ravensburger. If we take a look, we can see they are much smaller. So the completed puzzle size, again, will be much smaller. So these could be quite good if you want to like do a puzzle on your knee on a tray, like watching TV but I think it might also make them a bit more challenging. That was our final puzzle for today. I have certainly got plenty to keep me busy. Keep an eye out on the channel for the time lapses and puzzle vlogs as I complete them. Thank you so much for watching. Please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'll just say take care and happy puzzling.